Number 10. Ian Bonnick Marines often have to go through extreme training in order to properly serve in their chosen branch. This severe drilling usually results in tough soldiers who know how to get the job done, but it can also have negative effects on mental health and wellness. One former Marine from Florida named Ian Christopher Bonnick is a shining example of this. In 2021, the 43-year-old man was accused of brutally killing his ex-wife, Katie Bonnick. In addition to serving as a Marine, Ian also worked as a bodybuilder in his past. His physical demeanor is incredibly intimidating, to say the least. The month before her death, Katie had filed for a restraining order against Ian. She took this step after he allegedly physically abused one of the two children they share. Katie's last known appearance was on September 29th, when she let a friend know she'd be visiting her ex to get the last of her belongings from his home. She said that she'd be back as soon as she finished, but that never happened. Authorities noticed her vehicle in Ian's driveway the next day, but he wouldn't let anyone inside his home without a warrant. When police finally got inside, they saw obvious signs of a struggle. Then, they sprayed a chemical on the suspect's car that glows when it comes in contact with blood residue. Ian's entire trunk lit up, and they found more bright spots inside the house. The property contained a large burn pit where investigators discovered human bone fragments. A large barrel nearby also had the distinct smell of rotting flesh. The last update on this case came in December 2022, when a Florida court formally indicted Ian on first-degree murder charges. Number 9. Millionaire Murder In April 2014, Big Shot businessman Andrew Bush and his new girlfriend, Maria Korotayeva, went to the man's Spanish villa in Costa del Sol for some relaxation. While there, Andrew's former lover, 28-year-old Maika Kukusova, interrupted the couple's getaway. She showed up to the property and shot her ex. Bush was well known in the jewelry industry after making a fortune working as a pawnbroker. Many customers and peers referred to him as the certified king of bling. The man wasn't afraid to flaunt his wealth either, boasting an entire fleet of luxury vehicles, including Ferraris and Lamborghinis. At just 22 years old, Maika met Bush after getting hired in one of his Bristol shops. The pair sparked up a romance, but it quickly went sour due to Maika's unrelenting jealousy and paranoia. To put it simply, she went a bit cuckoo. The tycoon sister claims the young woman was a gold digger interested in her lover's money. By October 2013, they ended their romantic relationship for good. While Bush moved on and started dating others very quickly, Maika took the rejection hard. She constantly flooded her ex with messages, and her anger only grew when she saw Bush dating a younger woman. On April 5th, she waited inside the Costa del Sol villa to face the new couple head on. When he realized his former partner was there, Bush told Maria to wait outside and call the cops while he tried talking some sense into the angry woman. A few moments later, three gunshots went off and the businessman was killed. In May 2016, Maika was sentenced to 15 years in prison. After an appeal though, it was reduced to 13. Number 8. Judy Malinowski In August 2015, 31-year-old cancer survivor and mother, Judy Malinowski, was attacked by her ex-boyfriend, Michael Slager, in Ohio. Earlier that year, the victim told her mother, Bonnie, that she'd started dating someone. But over a short period of time, Michael started to become more and more controlling. It got so bad that he even put a tracking device on Judy's phone to trace her every movement. She tried telling the police, but there wasn't enough evidence for them to do something about it. So the woman decided to break things off with Michael on her own. This obviously didn't end well. The man refused to leave Judy's house when she broke up with him. She called her mom, who quickly came over and ordered Michael to leave. When he still didn't listen, authorities had to intervene and remove him from the home. Apparently, he'd been giving Judy painkillers. After suffering from cancer, Judy developed a brief addiction to similar substances, but she'd been in recovery at the time. This forced relapse persuaded her to visit a rehab center a week later. On the way there, Michael confronted her at a gas station, but the argument got out of hand. Judy threw a drink in the man's face, so he retaliated by hitting her, dousing her in gas, and lighting the flame. Because of these actions, Judy suffered third-degree burns to nearly 70% of her body. Despite severe pain and suffering, Judy fought to stay alive for 700 days. Sadly, 
she fell victim to the injuries. During the attempted recovery, she managed to film a video against her ex-boyfriend which was used in court. With this and other evidence, Michael was sentenced to life in prison for Judy's murder. Number 7. Chad Absher In Florida on Halloween night in 2017, Ashley Rucker was killed by her ex-boyfriend Chad Absher. The incident happened right in front of the victim's nine-year-old boy. Another woman was also shot that day, Lisa Rucker, the victim's sister. Luckily, she survived after undergoing multiple surgeries. During the trial, Chad told the judge and jury that he was the real victim in the case. He lied through his teeth during testimony claiming that Ashley was the one who shot Lisa before somehow managing to shoot herself in the back of the head. Anyone with common sense would understand how impossible it would be for Ashley to do this, considering the weapon used was a rifle. Ashley's family claimed that Chad had abused the young woman for years while they were together. Things got so out of hand at times that police had to be called to intervene. This behavior isn't very surprising considering Chad winked at Ashley's loved ones and blew kisses to them in court after being convicted of murder. The man clearly isn't all there. For his crimes, Chad faces life behind bars. The jury says that they're refraining from the death penalty and trying to get the longest possible sentence for the killer instead. Number 6. Jolie Musa On January 12, 2018, a 16-year-old girl from Fairfax, Virginia was killed by her abusive ex-boyfriend. Jolie Musa and Nabiyu Ibrahim had a rocky history together. Being two years older than Jolie, Nabiyu had a strange power complex from the beginning of their relationship. It was easy to see that their dynamic was toxic and unhealthy considering the multiple times he'd strangled his ex in the past. On multiple occasions, he choked her so bad that she lost consciousness. The young man was eventually ordered to stay away from the girl, and he was even kicked out of high school. But he refused to let their relationship end. According to a statement Jolie gave police officers, Nabiyu would not allow her to break up with him. Sadly, this behavior escalated to the extreme. Before her body was recovered in a park, Jolie had been missing for weeks. Later on in court, Nabiyu admitted that he was furious with his ex. He blamed every one of his problems in life on her. This rage manifested into abuse. After she secretly snuck out of the house to meet up with him, Nabiyu brutally beat the victim and strangled her again, this time to death. After the murder, the young man moved Jolie's body to the woods and used her phone to text her sister. He pretended to be her, saying that she went to a nearby town for a party. Because of this, investigators were thrown off Nabiyu's trail for a short period of time. While he has yet to be sentenced, the killer did plead guilty to first-degree murder, so it's only a matter of time. If you found out your partner was tracking you when you weren't with them, would you confront them about it and ask them to stop? Or would you break off the relationship immediately after finding out? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 5 Karime Barreto Sabalza. After telling multiple friends that she feared for her life, 18 year old Karime Barreto Sabalza was killed by her terrifying boyfriend at a park in Kent, Washington. The young woman specifically told people that, if anything happens to me, report it and say it was Gio. This was in reference to the woman's 19 year old partner, Giovanni Heron. In June 2018, he allegedly convinced Karime to follow him into the secluded woods. While there, he fatally shot her in the head. Afterwards, he reportedly took the victim's belongings and drew money out of an ATM using her bank card. Considering that Karime had warned her loved ones of her fear, she must have known Giovanni was capable of doing terrible things. It's likely that she felt trapped in the relationship and was scared to break up with him in case he'd do something. While in police custody, the killer tried to escape. He made up a fake sickness and was taken to the Harborview Medical Center to get checked out. This was his opportunity at freedom, but the attempt ended in a security guard shooting him. The injury was not life-threatening though, so Giovanni will still have to face the consequences for what he did. It's unclear if the young man has been sentenced for Karime's murder yet, but he was initially being held in jail on a million-dollar bond. Number 4. Sonia Khan TikTok is full of videos talking about relationship red flags and what not to look for in a partner. One woman, 
29-year-old Sonia Khan made several posts on similar topics. She documented her divorce process to try and change the harmful narrative surrounding it. Unfortunately, Raheel Ahmed, her 36-year-old ex-husband, didn't appreciate her making videos about their personal life. In July 2022, Ahmed went to the woman's apartment in Chicago. He'd traveled all the way from Georgia just to confront her. While there, he shot Sonia in the head before killing himself. When police arrived at the scene, they discovered Sonia's dead body. Ahmed was found alive, but he passed later on in the hospital. Those who knew the two recognized that the killer had made multiple attempts to save their marriage, but he was turned down each time. During their time together, Ahmed had been extremely manipulative. He apparently always monitored where his wife was, who she was with, what she was wearing, and everything in between. Even though Sonia's family didn't agree with the divorce, her friends supported her thoroughly. One of the woman's friends, Gabriella Bordeaux, was excited to share a future with Sonia after they'd just signed a lease together on a property in the victim's hometown of Chattanooga. Number 3. Lisa Williams During the 2018 holiday season, 26-year-old Lisa Williams was decorating her Christmas tree with her boyfriend, Travis Cook, and his two children in Salt Lake City, Utah. In the middle of this peaceful scene, Chelsea Cook, Travis's ex-wife, opened fire on Lisa. She'd come to the couple's apartment earlier that day to give one of the kids some medicine since the child was suffering from a cold. While there, she went into the bathroom and locked the door. Travis asked her to leave a few times when suddenly, Chelsea burst out of the room with a gun she'd hidden in her coat. She shot at Lisa while her children witnessed their mother commit murder. After shooting Lisa, Chelsea sat down in a nearby recliner and calmly watched as her ex-husband frantically attempted to save his girlfriend. When she tried leaving, he held her against the wall until police arrived at the scene. They arrested Chelsea on the spot, and a Utah court later sentenced her to 34 years to life in prison. Number 2. Jade Marsh In the summer of 2021, 27-year-old Jade Marsh was killed by her ex-husband Russell in Flintshire, Wales. Her body was discovered hidden under a large pile of clothing on her bed. She'd been brutally stabbed and strangled to death. 29-year-old Russell left work early on the night of the murder after telling his boss that his brother had tried killing himself. But instead of going to his siblings' home, he chose to visit the house he once shared with his ex-wife and children. Apparently, he'd gone to confront Jade after hearing that she'd recently kissed a different man. An autopsy report revealed that Jade attempted to fight her attacker off in the moments leading up to her death, but she was ultimately unsuccessful. After killing Jade, Russell told police that he'd done something terrible. They soon found the victim's body and were able to arrest him. In court, a jury took just a few hours to convict Russell, and on April 12, 2022, he was sentenced to life behind bars. Number 1. Teresa Hansen On December 28, 2022, 54-year-old Teresa Hansen stabbed and murdered her husband Paul in their East Yorkshire home. The man was quickly rushed to the hospital after the incident, but medical professionals were unable to save his life. Just a few days before, the couple had spent Christmas with their grandchildren. One relative shared a picture online of the seemingly happy family celebrating that day. Sherry, Paul's daughter, captioned the photo saying, We've had the best day today with family. Little did she know what was soon to come. The couple had been married for nearly 34 years, so this news came as a shock to many. Loved ones always describe the grandparents' relationship as picturesque, but you never know what secrets people are hiding behind their smiles. This case is still brand new, so no formal sentence has been given, and information is very limited. The accused woman, Teresa, has her next trial date on June 12, 2023, and she's currently out on bail. Do you have any crazy stories about an ex? Let us know in the comments down below, and be sure to subscribe! Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Bad Badger!